G7. D, to, to D minor, that chord change is a real beast. I said beast. I was going to say beast. I did say beast. Um, hey everybody, my name is Mark. Welcome back to 2000 Hours of Banjo. This is Gentle on My Mind. It is in C tuning and it's supposed to be easy. <laughs> But before I get into what the heck I'm doing in C tuning and why I'm playing Gentle On My Mind, I wanted to pause a bit and talk about my instructor. Now, for those that don't know who are new to the channel, my name's Mark, this is 2000 Hours of Banjo. It's a channel dedicated to my first 2000 hours of practice learning how to play this instrument as an adult beginner with, with absolutely no musical experience in my history at all. I've never played an instrument, I never sang, I never was part of a band, never, none of that at all. I started at age 48, I'm now 49, I'm about a year and a half into this. I got my banjo for my wife for the Christmas of 2022 and started playing every single day starting on January 1st, 2023. About a month or two in, I sought an instructor to help me on my journey to learn this instrument. And I found my instructor, Mike Leatherman. I put his website in the description of almost all my videos. And there's a good reason I do that because he's a good resource. He has a ton of experience. He started playing banjo at age seven. He started playing in his family's bluegrass band a couple years after that. He knows how to play piano and guitar, both keyboard and um, acoustic guitar and electric guitar. He's toured in Nashville with John Michael Montgomery. He's got tons of experience and he watches these videos. And I know a lot of you guys that watch this video, watch my channel, are new to learning how to play an instrument or have about as much experience as I have, or maybe a little bit more, and maybe you do or don't have access to an instructor. If you have questions about music, about playing the banjo, put them in the comments. Um, Mike watches these videos, he does read the comments. I certainly read the comments. If I see a question geared towards Mike, I will bring it to his attention so he can respond to it. Or you can click the link to his website and and email him or call him. Or if you want, you can actually take lessons with him. If you've been watching this channel and you like seeing the progress, if you're impressed with the progress that I have 
made in the now, what is it? We're at 566 hours of banjo practice. Then maybe you may want to take a lesson with him. He does Zoom lessons and he is open to take on new students if, you're, if, you, if you would like. Uh, and he's really, really good. Like, I don't have, obviously, a lot of experience with different music instructors. This, this is my first instrument. But he is really great. He's incredibly supportive. He's incredibly knowledgeable. He's very nice. And to be honest, now that I say it, this whole experience of learning how to play banjo has just been a chain of meeting some of the coolest, nicest, supportive people. Um, I, it reminds me of that, that ad campaign that Honda had in uh, kind of in retaliation or opposition to Harley Davidson back in the, whatever it was, the 60s or 70s, before I was born anyway, where Honda said, uh, what was it? You meet the nicest people on a Honda, right? That's what I feel about banjo, is that you, you really just meet the nicest people learning how to play banjo. When I, on day one, I looked online for banjo lessons online and I found Eli Gilbert's 30 Days of Banjo. Since then, I, I printed out his 30 day uh, tablature. I carry that with me everywhere for months and months and months. And then I join his Patreon so I can ask him some, some questions. And at one point, I just you know what? <laughs> can I mail my dad to you and for your autograph? And he said, yeah. So I, <laughs> I actually sent my tablature. This is the very tablature I printed out January 1st, 2023 and carried it with me everywhere. So it's a bit tattered. But I mailed it to him. He, he autographed it. And, and he sent it back. This is his autograph right here. And Eli, if you're watching, you can make your autograph a little bit bigger. I don't think anybody's gonna believe that's your autograph on this. But I keep this in my tab binder as a bit of inspiration. Uh, but he's such a cool dude for doing that. Also in, in that same early period of, of learning how to play banjo, I came across the Banjo Attic, probably the second banjo channel that I subscribe to. That guy is really cool. He's got a lot of good videos, a lot of good things that, a, you know, somebody that is learning how to play an instrument, learning how to play an, a, a banjo, super valuable. And he's really cool. He's com commented on my videos. He's been very supportive. Uh, any questions that I've had, he's answered. Another good banjo channel would be Mac Plays Banjo. He's got a really small channel just like me and he puts out original content. He's got a lot more skill than I have. He's a younger guy. And, uh, but he's also super cool, really supportive. You see a theme here. Everybody seems so supportive and really cool. I haven't met anybody so far that was an a-hole or anything like that. They're all really cool. Tom Neckville, if you're a fan of this channel, you already know, but if you're new and you don't, I have set myself a little bit of, uh, not a little bit, a huge incentive that if I reach 1,000 hours, I'm going to treat myself to a Neckville banjo. It's, it's like my, you know, that's, <laughs> that's my, uh, what is driving me to 1,000 hours is that, is that Neckville banjo. But in the first year when I was practicing banjo, I was using really bad form and I ended up injuring my index finger. And I've spoken about this a couple of times and I've made a couple of videos about this. And I reached out to Tom Neckville because his banjos have a radius neck. The nut width is a little bit wider than the steering banjo, which maybe would uncramp that C chord, which you use a lot in bluegrass banjo. And he offered to rent me one of his banjos for a couple of weeks so I can try it to see if that helps improve the finger. I didn't take him up on it at that time um, because A, I was a little bit too afraid to use my finger. I literally could not bend my finger further than that. That's how bad it was. I had to, I had to force it down to stretch it. Um, but it was also near Christmas. It was, this was near Christmas of 2023 now. And I had just spent all the money on, <laughs> on gifts for my family. So I didn't really have enough left to rent one of his banjo, even though I would get that back once I returned the banjo. I just, I didn't have it in the budget and I didn't want to throw it all on one credit card. 
but he's super nice. They even offer Mike Heading. I've mentioned his name quite a number of times. I get a lot of his tablature. A lot of the songs that I'm learning are from Mike Heading. I have since joined his online program, communicating back and forth with him. Super nice guy. There's an old acquaintance of his that often watches this channel too that knew Mike back when he was just starting to learn to play banjo and said he was a nice guy. I can, I can vouch for that. He was very helpful, very nice guy. And then we get to where we're at today with Gentle On My Mind, which I got from uh, Eddie Collins. He runs another YouTube channel and he puts out uh, training videos and instructional videos. Um, he's a multi-instrumentalist as well. Banjo is one of the instruments that he has videos on. And I saw this song, Gentle On My Mind, which I've been looking for because I have a friend named Jim who plays guitar. He plays pretty well and he knows this song and is a fan of the song and I wanted to learn it so I can jam with him. And he said it was basically a pretty easy song, easy to learn. It's only got like two or three chord changes. And so I saw Eddie Collins YouTube video. He's got a little link to send him a couple of bucks and then he sends you seriously like same day I got the banjo tab. Since then I've I've also ordered and have already received two more tabs or three more tabs from him. And I I asked him, it's like, hey, can I mention you? Can I talk about you on my channel? And he said, yeah, sure, man. And he actually checked out my channel and he said he really liked what I'm doing. And that's just it just it feels really cool. They got all these really cool people in this world of banjo that uh, I never would have met had I not started playing banjo. Uh, so it's really, really cool. But let's go ahead and get back to Gentle on My Mind. Now, <laughs> it is supposed to be an easier song. There's no tricky uh, licks to it. It's basically just roll patterns. There's no hammer-ons or pull-offs or slides. So it's not very technical. And it does only have three chord changes. There's a C to D minor and then a D minor to a G7. But it is tuned different. I do have to, it is in C tuning, so I did have to tune my banjo differently. And there's been like this cascade effect. It actually is deceptively harder than I thought it would be just by looking at the tablature. The first thing is, as you saw in the intro, I was struggling pretty good from C to D7, where you literally have to split your fingers, uh, your pinky and your, your ring finger from your middle and index finger uh, from, from the C chord. And the C chord is different too. I'll get into that a little bit. So it's going from the C to the D minor. And that is tricky. <laughs> I'm finding that to be really tricky. <laughs> that said, I've only been working on this for a few days and check out what I can do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Live long and prosper, everybody. I've never been able to do that, not as a kid ever. I was the uncoolest kid in AP calculus because I could not do this. I, I can't do it with my right hand. <laughs> I can't do it. But now all of a sudden, a couple of days on Gentle on My Mind, and I'm part Vulcan. It's, it's pretty amazing <laughs> the little things that develop. Uh, while you're learning how to play an instrument. So that's that's pretty cool. But the, the C tuning is also throwing me for a loop. So the C tuning is taking the fourth string, which is typically a D note in open G tuning, and tuning it down to two half steps to a C note. And that allows you to, now this is typically your C chord, on open G tuning, you have an E, e note on the first string under your ring finger, then a C note under your index finger on the second string, and then another E note on the fourth string under your middle finger. Now under C tuning, and then the G, which finishes the triad, is, is your third string and that's open. So the C chord is C, E, G. Those are the three notes in the C chord. And when you tune the, the fourth string to a C, you now only, you, you actually get two C's. The fourth string is a C, 
the second string is still a C under that index finger. You have your E still from the first, first string, second fret under your uh, ring finger, and then the third string is still your G. So that is, it, it is interesting. I think it's really interesting. And as I'm learning music theory, it's, it's an interesting way to build the C chord in different ways, where in open G, you have two E's in your C chord. And then in, in C tuning, you actually have two C's and one E in your, in your C chord. So that is now my C chord in C tuning. But what is really throwing me for a loop outside of the C to D minor is that over the past year, I've only played in G tuning. And my right hand, my right fingers have gotten accustomed to hitting a string, producing a sound that my ear picks up and my brain interprets as, yes, you hit the correct string with that finger. What happens when you take this fourth string from D to C, well, which is typically hit with your thumb, your thumb pick, that makes a different sound. And because it's making a different sound, my ears are registering a different sound, and my brain is telling me that my thumb just hit the wrong string. And it really is throwing my right fingers for a loop. They think they're in the wrong place, and that causes me to pause and look down and say, where am I, where am I at? Because my fingers, kind of like an ant where a leaf has fallen on the trail, my fingers lose their way once that thumb hits that fourth string and produces a C note rather than the D note. And at, that has been an interesting hurdle to try to overcome and which is making gentle on my mind pretty damn challenging, a lot more challenging than it looks anyway. All right, well, I have a lot of C tuning practice to get to. I'm gonna leave you guys for now so I can get back to it. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in, bye.